Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. So with that in mind, let's jump right in to this week's episode of Becoming Something. What's up, podcast world? It's your boy, JP, with the nerd, nerd's gummy clusters. Like, you always have those on you. Man. It's just, that fell on the floor. Would you eat it if it fell on the 100%. floor? 100%. Y'all are wild. No. Man, so here's some things about <laughs> like me. You're not, like, you wouldn't eat it. One of, the, one of the things you need to know about me is I'm not into potlucks. Like, everyone's like, man, let's have a potluck. I'm like, I don't trust what you made. Like, I thought it was because you wouldn't want to make food I have a friend the people. same way. So it's like stuff on the ground, stuff from your house. Like from I from my house, I, I've made you I food don't know. Before. I don't. You're, I mean, I've he been to cleaner houses. It. He told me about it. <laughs> he was like, "Dude, whatever you do, do." That's why I, I have made you food before. That's why we haven't eaten at your house. Oh, it's like I don't know what your motive is. I need to have y'all over for dinner. I actually am not the best cook, so I should probably work on that first. So I like to go places where I know what I'm going to get. Like where? Like McDonald's? That's why I go to Jimmy John's and Chick-fil-A. Just kind of alternate between the two. And, and, and Chipotle. People have gotten food poisoning from Chick-fil-A. Oh. And Chipotle. Oh, no. Yeah, Satan worshippers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. They had it coming. Right, exactly. They walk in there. I'm the Lord just, knows. So you trust them, but you don't trust me. That's I, what I'm I trust you. I just like, if I show up at something, like a chili cook-off, I'm like, I ain't eating any of this chili. I, I don't, I, I mean... I just don't know. Wow, I just don't think about it. I and feel I like people everything. have died you, before. Have, I mean, have you ever eaten in like Taco Bell or McDonald's or I mean, Jack in the Box all the time? Yeah, but no chili cook off. Yeah. But they have but to. They have to. You know, made. They all they make it the same way every time. Yeah, man, those people that you know. How'd you grow up as a Baptist the, without liking behind the counter that you oh. can't see? Yeah, I'm sure they're doing a great job with your food. I'm sure it's amazing. Following your frozen food. I did have a friend who worked at a pizza place in Alaska, and he's like, dude, we would drop these pizzas on the floor all the time. No. Oh, yeah. I mean, like. like Ignorance is bliss, man. Like, Just put, don't like, put stuff on the pizza. I mean, all right. it's crazy. So yeah, Close the shop. Me and Jermaine. <laughs> oh, my God. Take them away. Take them away. <laughs> so, speaking of Nerds Gummy Clusters, you were talking about M&M's. <laughs> M&M's? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what did I say about Which M&M's? I thought you said, candy. like. M&M's is going to win a devil award or something. Have you heard like that. that song? I have Use not, this gospel? I have not, and I know that's bad, and like I know everyone Dude. else has. All right, let's play it. I only listen to Matthew West. This is Matthew, Matthew's brother, Kanye. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Kingdom. You knew that was Kanye, right? Have you heard it? Well, in the background, it's, it's, the, it's the DJ Khaled guy. Yeah, the DJ Khaled guy. <laughs> Did they start a Bible Another study one. together? <laughs> Take it much longer. Faith in you, Father. Oh, wow. We should do a podcast on that. We should take, we should chop up the uh, song and ask questions like, is Eminem a Christian? That's what everybody wants to know. But he says in the song, though, he says, uh, I know that I shouldn't compare an atheist. Uh, it might be blasphemy to compare an atheist to something. I'm, I'm not sure what Only he means. Only God by can that. judge me. No, no, that's Tupac. You know who Tupac? I that was you know who Bieber. Tupac is, right? Yeah, he's still alive, man. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> How do you know who Tupac is, but not Vanilla Ice? Yeah, because That's Tupac awesome. is like everyone knows no, him. Everyone knows Vanilla Ice, buddy. Ev- like Vanilla Ice, he has that one song, right? That's like, all you need. That you didn't know, and I could not name a Tupac song either. But for sure, no. Anyway, you know a Tupac so, song? No, for sure I couldn't. He was dead before I was alive. <sighs> he ain't dead. It's it's a government conspiracy. They're trying to hide it because Tupac a, knows things. He knows what the votes are. <laughs> he and he they put him and Biggie on an island. Yeah, exactly. And Elvis, right? Didn't people Elvis say is that still, he alive, was still alive? But they sent him to the moon. Everyone thinks the moon thing in the 1960s. <laughs> yeah, that did not happen then. Gosh, no you're such a conspiracy. Transformers theorist. taught me that. <laughs> oh my gosh! I learned that. 
<laughs> okay. Anyway, so I don't I don't listen to and the, and so and and the thing that really gets me is they try to convince you the Earth is round. I, that's the thing. Oh my! <laughs> that's the thing. Have you ever felt it being it round? Feels pretty flat to me. <laughs> like I'm standing flat. right look, here. Look at this if it, room. If it was round, I'd be we'd like, be falling yeah. over. Yeah. yeah, this room is Gosh. crazy. It's crazy stuff, man. That's really bad. well, guys. I don't even know what to do. I just have a question. What are we actually? And this is awkward because I'm like paid to do this and stuff, and like I'm supposed to talk about it and preach about it. I'm just kind of wondering how do I read my Bible? Okay. <laughs> it's this big book. There's a lot of words. I feel like we could have set this up better. And, and than JP's that. like, read your Bible, and I'm like, it's what? actually 66 books. We see, yeah, and then people say that stuff, which is confusing because it's the. I'm like, it's one book. She says one cover. So do I? Do I start from Genesis? Do I like what? What do I do? What What should I read, and, and how do I read it? Like. And I'm so it's glad. just it's it's I'm glad it's you're finally asking. So this glad you're well, one but, of the greatest the Bible teachers of our day. <laughs> For a lot of people, it's overwhelming. And here's the problem: I think it's assumed that you know what to do. It is something that if you're like 18 or 22 or 25, and you have or 55 or 55, you feel like it's too late. I can't ask this question because I'll be found out or whatever. So no. I think this is a I'm, I think this is a great topic. Okay. All right, so I think um, there's there's actually a book, uh, uh, 30 Days to Understanding the Bible, which I think is helpful because starting out, just understanding how to navigate it. And mm-hmm. so I would spend some time, as you get a Bible, you're looking at it for the first time, I'd spend some time in the table of contents, you know, understanding that it's not a book, that it is 66 books written over 1,500 years by 40 different authors on three continents in three languages with one central truth. It is talking about God's redemption of the world, God's redemptive plan of the world through his son, Jesus Christ. So when you get, so it's divided in two parts, Old Testament, New Testament. Old Testament is before Jesus shows up as a man because he was there in the beginning with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit creating the world as we know it. Um, and and so that he shows up, he's born of Mary, and then you have the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So it's, it's really the same story repeated four times mm-hmm. told from different perspectives. That's the story of Jesus. This is kind of this big like, oh, Jesus is here moment. He dies on the cross. He raises from the dead. That's the Gospel. He dies for our sins. He raises from the dead. And then you get into the epistles, the the letters to churches, letters to Corinth, letters to Thessalonica, letters to Philippi, letters to the church in Rome. And you get Peter's perspective, you get John's perspective, and then you have um, uh, prophetical books like, or prophetic books rather, like Revelation. And so t- telling us of a future to come. And so just, just understanding like your way around the Bible, mm-hmm. I think is a good starting place before you even just, and that doesn't have to be a long time. You don't have to take a class, right. but just, I'm just saying before you dive into John, which is an amazing place to start, right? To, to read the book of John, to understand the life of Jesus, to know that these books are not all the same. Like some of them are poetry. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them are prophetic. Some of them are letters. Uh, some of them are historical and so understanding like all right what am i reading right. and and because that's going to help me know how to yep. apply it and yep. then i, I want to say something crazy before we move too far beyond that and this is where i think the church actually misses it is you know how how do i read the bible i want to say this at the beginning of of this podcast or toward the beginning of the podcast not all the same because mm-hmm. we don't all read the same you know, and so it's like you're going to read a book different than I'm going to read a book, and so I, I'm. You may be a speed reader, and you may whiz through that book and retain that information. You may you may have a really high comprehensive comprehension skill, where I may read every line in the book three times just to try to understand. Oh, this character is is doing this. I may not be as skilled as a reader than you. I want to. I may want to read it and listen to it at the same time. So one person may say, "Hey, this morning in my quiet time." I I read Romans, right? And somebody else might say, man, that's interesting. In my quiet time, I read Romans 8, verse 1, chapter 8, verse 1. Mm-hmm. And then this person's like, you read one verse in your mm-hmm. quiet time? Well, I, I spent you know, 30 minutes reading Romans. And they said, well, that's interesting. I spent an hour 
yeah. reading this one verse. That is so good. So I don't I don't think we want to say to everyone, hey, you should all read the Bible the same right. way. It's I, all different. I, I, I'm, I do not read well. Uh, I don't enjoy you reading. You don't read good. Yeah, I don't read good. I don't enjoy reading. Uh, it's it's not fun for me. And so I've I've done the like um, daily Bible reading plan, the the read the Bible in a year, and I do not like those plans. I mean, it is it is like mm-hmm. such a chore for me to read, you know, multiple chapters, six chapters, eight chapters in the morning, and it's just like all breadth, no depth. Like I I go slow when I read the Bible, but I'm not going to tell somebody else, hey, you should go slow when you read the Bible, because. I, I don't know your skill. I don't know how your brain works. Like, I will say we've, we're saying the word read a lot, and I don't think the Bible is really meant to be read like a book, but to be studied, to understand, okay, who is writing this? When are they writing this? Who are they writing this to? Why did they write it to them? And then what is the eternal truth that that is captured in this? So really even starting with some context, like, hey, I want to understand, does this apply today like people really get get um you know caught up in in those kinds of things so like one of the the things the podcast proposal you were i asked you hey what, what should we talk about you said like women teaching and so it's like hey when we read that in uh second timothy two twelve, what does that mean is that is he just saying that to a group of people then or is that an internal truth that should apply to the church at large like why did the holy spirit keep that in there and what do we do with it when we read verses we should ask that like in proverbs 15 it says do not answer a fool according to his folly and then the next verse is answer a fool according to his folly well which one of those should i apply like, how do I know what to do with that? I've got to go slow and understand, okay, why is he writing this? What is the context and how do I apply it? Man, that's good. I think that those kind of questions keep people from reading their Bible because yeah. they think, oh, I have to be a scholar to fully understand this. Yeah. Or if scholars have really debated this one that's sentence, right. then how could I have any hope at understanding it, let alone the rest of the Bible? And I would just say that's a crafty lie from the enemy that's to right. keep us from reading scripture. That's good. Yeah. So why is the why is it not an option to not read? Like you you That's set it up question. by saying, I don't like reading. I I'm not. I don't enjoy it. Yeah. I'm not all that why good don't you at just it. Not read it. Like no. why? Yeah. Why can't you just not read and read a book by someone else or 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 I don't know. Listen to a podcast. If you think about what faith is, so like we're we're saved by grace and we receive that grace through faith. Faith is belief and belief in what belief in God, belief in what God has done for us, belief in the gospel that he sent his son Jesus Christ to die for our sins and raised him from the dead. Well, how do you know that? Well, I know that because it's in the scripture. And so if if I'm going to believe, like sometimes people will get really hung up on things in the scripture, but it's like, but wait a minute, the gospel that saves people is a story that's told in the Bible. That is the source of that story. Why would we believe that and not these other things? And that's, that's really where you see uh, deconstruction is a big buzzword right now, but really I'll just say faith coming unfrayed, <laughs> unraveling because people say, oh wait, no, well, I do believe in the Bible. I mean, I do believe in the gospel, but I don't believe in that, that, or that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, wait, why would you trust this collection of 66 books when they get to this really fantastic story of somebody dying and coming back to life, but not when he says he created the world in six days, or they put every animal of its kind on a boat, or, you know, yeah. these, th- or Jonah lived in a whale for three days. Believing that someone rose themselves from the dead is yeah. like more unbelievable than, than a anything boat else. Hearing a bunch of animals. Than anything else. Like there's nothing more fantastic in the scripture than Jesus raising from the dead. Yeah. Like being in a grave for three days and then showing back up. There's nothing more unbelievable in the collection of 66 books than that. And so we have to say, is the Bible authoritative? Like, do I believe it? What authority does it have in my life? And if it has authority in my life, then I need to know what it says. And if this is a means by which I can grow my relationship with God, because everyone wants to hear God. Like there are people walking around so emotionally driven, desperate to hear the voice of God. I heard the voice of God. God told me to break up and God told me to move there and God told me to do it and God said and God said and God said. In the scripture, God says, I'm not saying that he doesn't speak all like he doesn't speak to you he doesn't prompt your your heart i believe the spirit of god does speak to us i believe god does communicate with us today and the clearest form of that communication is in 
the scripture. Not the exclusive form of his communication, mm-hmm. but the clearest is in the scripture, the the books that we have. Mm-hmm. And so we we should read it to know him, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, yeah. But, I mean, it's it's really, really confusing because it says stuff like, don't eat shellfish, and at the same time, like, don't have sex with your girlfriend. And it's like, why do we just pick and choose which one to, like, really preach on? And, like, I don't know. I just feel like culture evolves and changes where it's like, we can eat shrimp. All my friends are living with their girlfriend. Why, why can't I do that? So it's like, I don't know. It's like, sure, I believe in Jesus, but all the other, like, side stuff is just confusing. So yeah. like, I just don't even know what to do with that. Even these issues that you raise, like like we can't eat shellfish, but but uh, I mean we can't. It says don't eat shellfish, but I can now. But I can't sleep with my girlfriend. Like gosh, what is going on? Like even that is a is a question of hermeneutics. Is yeah. a question of how you study the Bible. So we have to understand when I read like like people really will say that thing like they trumped a Christian. Like oh yeah, and they're like you know I <laughs> you really got you because yeah. you went to Red Lobster and got yeah. the the oysters. It's like no wait that's that's actually quite silly this is how we read the levitical law today we are no longer bound by the law christ fulfilled the law we now live according to his spirit which does include a sexual ethic and in fact there's a heuristic that i find really helpful as it pertains to the law you can the law can be understood in in three categories ceremonial uh, which is things that would make you unclean Things that would set you apart, like uh, not shaving the sides of your heads, not eating, you know, shellfish, those kinds of things. Uh, civil, which is like, hey, you take my cow, you have to pay me this amount of money, uh, you kill my child, I'm allowed to, you know, it's it's basically like our laws today, you speed, you get a ticket. And then moral, and then moral is like, you know, the do not kill, do not steal, do not commit adultery you know, sexual ethic. Well, today the spirit of God still convicts us of the moral law, if you will. And it's not to say the ceremonial and civil were irrelevant. They were extremely important of distinguishing God's people in that time. And today in the new, in the new covenant, in the new Testament, he says, my people will be known by how they love, by how they walk in relationship with me. So even to understand that as you read the Bible, like those are, those are great questions. There has never been in the history of the world more resources to helping yeah. you understand yes. the Bible, more Man. access to the answers of your questions. Like we are without yeah. excuse. You can go to gotquestions.org, like you got questions, G-O-T questions.org, and you can search, why can I not sleep with my girlfriend, but I can't eat shellfish? And it will give you an answer. Mm-hmm. You can go to carm.org, which stands for Christian Apologetic Resource Ministries, C-A-R-M.org. You can go to probe.org and ask about six day creation. You can you can inquire of scientists, you know, about tectonic plates and dinosaurs and where are they in the scriptures, who, answers in genesis.com. There are amazing resources out there to help you in addition to lots of commentaries. And so I would encourage you to have a commentary or a good study Bible with you when you read so that if you get to a question, you can read then in in the study Bible or in the commentary, at least an answer. You don't have to just take it at face value. You can look at other commentaries. You can see if, if you think they did a good job of answering your question. But I, I would encourage you to have those resources. Like we use those. I feel like that is helpful to know is like there's not a stigma of like, oh, I'm not smart enough. Like we have these resources. Literally this morning, Jude and I are reading our Bibles next to each other. Mom flex. Well, it's awesome. You're better than us. No, whatever. That's cool. So he saw me on my phone. He was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm looking at a commentary. And I got to explain to him. And he's like, so you don't understand what you're reading? And I was like, well. I do right now, but not always. Sometimes I have questions, and it's okay if you have questions. If you're not understanding something, ask questions. There's this entire school of thought out there that's like, hey, you have the Holy Spirit. You shouldn't have a commentary. They're going to influence. And I would just say, listen, the Spirit of God tends to have an affinity for the trained mind. And so it's okay to read the opinions of others right. and and to to test them. The scripture, yeah. the scripture itself says to test all things. And uh, I've never preached a sermon I don't think ever, probably, I mean, very few times, maybe if I was like in a pinch and somebody said, hey, you're up in five minutes, but very, very few times have I ever preached a sermon without uh, consulting commentaries. Yeah. I mean, 
I, I love getting questions from listeners emailed to me. It, it's awesome. I love getting to engage with you guys. But a lot of times it's like, they, they, let's say the question is, uh, why, why can't I have sex with my girlfriend or whatever? Yep. What I end up doing it, is it, I go like... It's a Bible study. <laughs> yeah, I, I go Bible verses on sex before marriage or yeah. go and got questions. Yeah. It's like, Google. I just, I do what you can do and I, I love to yeah. talk with you guys about that. But it's like, don't go to me it's yeah. like you you Work guys can yourself. do this yeah you, you, google is a tool it too is. i mean like we have google what does the bible say about yeah put in anything after that what does the bible say about and you will get, get a, a response to and, that question and, and think about this if you're a believer in jesus you're a christian you're saying like man i stake my life on the bible largely like mm-hmm. i i believe this thing yeah but think about how many of us say man i'm gonna bet my life on this my, my actions my thoughts my, my my words my bank account all that i'm gonna bet my life on this thing and yeah. yet you haven't read it. But I'm not yeah. gonna read it you said why read it and i i want to say so the gideons who work to put a bible in every hotel room in america they say this this is at the beginning of that bi- of the bible in your hotel room look for it next time you're there Um, The Bible contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding, its histories are true, and its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, and practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's charter. Here too, heaven is opened and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is its grand subject, our good its design, and the glory of God its end. It should fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of pleasure. It is given you in life, will be opened at the judgment, and be remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility, rewards the greatest labor, and will condemn all who trifle with its sacred contents. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Mic drop. drop. Like, <laughs> mic drop. drop. Uh. So, JP, you said you don't really read six chapters at a time. Like, what does that actually practically look like for you? Yeah, that would be helpful. Man, somebody said something to me that truly and sincerely changed my life uh, in, in, in starting with how I read the Bible. And they just said these, this really simple phrase. They said, read it like you're going to teach it. And, uh, man, that just a light bulb went off for me because I was just reading it to be able to say that I had read it, like a show up for accountability This yeah. at the time. This is a long time ago. But at the time, was before I was on staff at a church. And so before I ever taught the Bible, somebody said, read it like you're going to teach it. And that probably was like profoundly God kind of wooing me toward teaching and, and mm-hmm. realizing, recognizing a teaching gift. And so I'm there, you know, before that I would read it so that I could show up to accountability and say, oh, I read it and this is what I read and this is what it says. Like I was given a book report every week. I hated book reports. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I cheated on most book reports in high school. I, I would read the cliff notes or I'd watch Art the movie. Notes. I'd pretend to have read it, you know. And so now I'm giving a book report. That's like, that's what church is. I got to give her a book report every week. It's like, this is terrible. But then they said, read it like you're going to teach it. And so then I began to read it and thinking, how would I explain this to others? And that really opened my mind. And so that's, I'll take it in chunks, like teachable chunks, really. And so if it's like the story of David and Goliath, I may read that whole story. But this this morning, I'm just reading the end of Romans 8. Like I'm living in that. I'm looking at it and I'm reading it, you know, over and over and over and thinking, okay, what does it mean? And trying to see, okay, what are the what are the truths here? And and then I also read um, Matthew 6 and and then actually Mark 6. And Okay. No, I mean, wow, now you're flexing. I, and I don't I don't mean to. I mean, I, and and really like in full disclosure, <laughs> sometimes I would just read, you know, those four v- verses and that's over okay. and over and over. And that's okay. This morning, truly, I, I sensed the Lord saying, read. I mean, this is so, man, I'm totally outing myself right now. Please, <laughs> please keep going. I sensed the Lord saying, read Matthew 6. So I turned to Matthew 6 to read it. 
Well, I accidentally turned to Mark 6. <laughs> Shut, okay. up. Shut up. And, and so wait for it. Wait for it. So I turn the page. I turn the page to go to Matthew 6, but the wind blows back to Mark 6. And I'm like, oh, okay. Wow. I was like, I get it. God, I'll read Mark 6, you know? That's amazing. And so, and I don't know. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that's, that. And, and that's just me by myself. I'm with the yeah, Lord. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing. I, I'm not saying, you know, uh, for certainty that's him. But I'm just saying, hey, okay, I'll, like, like I've already kind of really read what I was going to read this morning, and if I sense that you want me to read Mark six, I don't have like I have time, and I'm going to read it because, you yeah. know, and there may be something in here for me, and so let me let me read it. So I know what's in it, but for Kathy, what's in Mark six? Well, it's it's I when he like, I know Matthew six. I don't know Mark six. It's when he sent out the seventy two, and uh, and it was interesting. In in Mark, he didn't say, um, "Don't you know, take a sword." And in other gospels, he said, "Hey, take a sword." And there, he didn't. And so I was like, I was just thinking about that. How interesting. So Nate, how do you read the Bible? I feel like what would be really helpful is honestly just hearing even three different perspectives, so that people can realize like it doesn't have to look like the way JP does it. it doesn't have to look like the way Nate does it. Yeah, so I've done it differently. So like last year, I read through the Bible in a year. So that that's essentially like three to four chapters a day no, uh not. which i like i think everyone should do that at some point in their life i i think uh it was great like getting to really understand the the, the breadth of scripture yeah. um but now it's typically i don't i mean this morning was two chapters like first corinthians seven and eight but uh i i mean it kind of depends on what if i don't if i don't have a specific plan of like hey i need to get done with matthew by yeah. tuesday if I if I read the first half of First Corinthians seven, I'm taking notes. It, like I'm I'm great to be like, man, I'll, I'll hit the next half tomorrow. Yeah. J- just to go one step further here to make it practical. I mean, something that's helpful is observation, interpretation, yep. application. And so observation, interpretation, application. So read something, and then say, what do I observe? Uh, who is this talking to? What is it saying? What you know? What do I know of the text? So who wrote it? What is the context? Yep. What do I observe in this text? There's there's a lot of nouns. There's a lot of verbs. It's imperative. It's declarative. It's uh, prescriptive. It's descriptive. It's historical. It, it's uh, narrative. It's uh, poetry. So what do I observe? And just write down your observations, and then interpretations. What does it mean? So it's what do I see? What does it mean? Mm-hmm. What what does this? Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. What does it mean that there is no condemnation? What does condemnation mean? Consequence, punishment. What does it mean that there's no punishment? Does it mean that I'll never receive a punishment if I rob a bank? I won't go to jail. No. So what does it mean? Oh, is he talking about heaven, eternity, how God sees me? Okay. So I'm I'm understanding what does it mean the interpretation. And then the application, what do I do? Yeah. So what do I see? What does it mean? What do I do? Observation, interpretation, application. So what do I do? Because therefore there is now no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 1. Well, I don't live with shame. Um, I'm gonna change the way that I think about God and how I think he thinks about me because he's not mad at me. There's no condemnation. Uh, um, what does it mean to be in Christ? What do I need to do? Okay, oh, so I need to remain in Christ. Does that mean abiding, John 15? So th- like, that's how you read the Bible. Observation, interpretation, application. Uh, what does it say or what do I see? What does it say? What do I see? Mm-hmm. What does it mean? What do I do? Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a helpful tool. Totally. If you and, want. and then what about translations? Like, I feel like the best Christians read ESV. Uh, like, <laughs> well, the people who are like, know Jesus. I am one of those. Oh, do you actually? Yeah. It's, oh, wow. It tends to be but more reformed. Yeah. yeah. Surprise me. Uh, it's really uh, surprising. Space for journaling. That's yeah, why yeah. I got it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> it tends to be, a, yeah. So, um, uh, ESV, NIV, NASB, NLT, uh, all of those are fine versions uh, to read truly uh, the message i don't care you know uh, truly i mean yeah. read by the version that you're going to read and uh, king james if if you're into elizabethan or new king james yeah. even is is a great translation i mean the one that you're going to read is a fine translation 
and look at other translations. Like as you're reading a verse, be like, oh, I wonder what this sounds like in the NIV. I have mostly NIV memorized. Like that's where I memorize because mm-hmm. ESV is a little yeah. bit wordier. But I like look at both and then look at the message on time occasions. Yeah, so I, I've always read the NIV. This year I got a, an ESV Bible because it is, it is like a more word for word translation. But honestly, sometimes I'm like, man, this is actually like more confusing. Totally. Uh, yeah. So like sometimes I'll check the NIV and then sometimes the message really actually like you does heretic. illuminate I like, the scripture. I like NIV personally, yeah. um, but even that's changed from 84 to 2011. Yeah. And... Um, you know, as you hear people, they'll say, "Oh, there's some. Why are there so many different versions of the Bible?" They all say this essentially the same thing. We're talking about, you know, participles and yeah. ands and these and plurals and the addition to, you know, where it says men and it means universal mankind, men and women, and those kinds of things. Did you hear that? There's a Gen Z translation of the Bible. Mm-hmm. I, I learned that yesterday. It's amazing. <laughs> I don't think I would recommend it. I don't know if it's an actual translation. No, I don't think it is. It's a TikTok. Yeah. Uh, can I share how I read scripture? No. <laughs> I asked you guys, and no. I was like, You're just I'm waiting. waiting. Man, this is... All right, I'm guys. Waiting. So with that, we well, are out of time, uh, and we will see you next week. Whatever. Come back next week to hear how... Kathy- Wait, are we really? No. Oh no. Oh, I was like, oh, okay. Well, I just... I found this from someone else. It's from the guys at 24-7 Prayer. But they talk about praying through the scripture, and it has been really helpful for me, which is why I wanted to share with it, you guys. I read just a few verses at a time, and I go like through P-R-A-Y. And each time I read it, I do a different thing depending on the acronym. So the first one is pause. And I just sit there and I pause. And I'm like, God, what do you have to say? What do you have to say to me through this? Because God wants to speak to us. Like, this is how we hear his voice. So kind of like reminding myself of that. And then R, I read through it again, and this time it's read and reflect. So I'm asking all those observation, interpretation type questions. Who is God? What does it say about him? What does it say about mankind? Writing it down. That's when I look at commentaries. The third time I read through it, I ask, like, God, based on what I read, what is the ask that you have for me here? And this is where it's like, man, this turns into a prayer. This turns into, wow, God, give me the courage that Paul has. Like, I confess my fear of man, that I that I want people to approve of me more than of the gospel. And then I read through it the fourth time, and it's why for yield. So based on what I've read and how I want to live and how I've asked God to change my heart, what do I have to give up? What do I have to surrender so that I can lift that out? Yeah. Fully? So it's been really helpful for me. Which I, is, sounds helpful. What was P again? Pause. pause. So I, pause I actually do reading. something too, and I really hope it catches on. It's called it's called the Nate way of reading the Bible. So anything new, I just write that down. And then anything that's awesome, I write that down. Respect. And then anything that I'm just thankful for i write that and then everything else that i see i and then i write that you're the worst <laughs> no, i'm over I, here trying to give a good y'all, resource both, both y'all. of y'all had one y'all i didn't come up with pray, it this isn't pray is me. Great. it's helpful it spells pray if you P-R-A-Y. didn't catch on that i want pause the- read and reflect <laughs> ask and yield pause you- read Ask you. I will repeat mine if, if that no, would no, be helpful. No, 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 I want is, I want the Nate version to catch up. Don't, don't ever heard the password story because it's yes. amazing. <laughs> we can talk about that anytime. Yeah. It gets me. The last thing I would say is like God wants us to know him mm-hmm. and that's why he's given us his word. I'm reminded of Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen, which says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Like God wants to be found by us. Mm-hmm. And so he's given us his word so that we will know him better. We just need to put in some effort and seek him. Yeah, that's great. It's good. It's good, Kathy. Nate, not so good. <laughs> not so good. It All right. stands for not so good. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, ends not so good. <laughs> A is absurd. <laughs> Atrocious. Uh, T terrible. is, yes, terrible. And E is enough for today, guys. Wow. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. To find out more, visit becomingsomething.com.